challenging is it, Raman? And, and he just talked about that, you know, acquisitions. Uh, you imagine that once you sign on the dotted line, it's done, but it's actually not. That's when the work actually starts. So what has it been like even for you to watch him do these acquisitions and now for you to take them forward? Look, I think, um, you know, he's done a fantastic job. I'm really honored to, to be a part of this company and, and I'm constantly learning every single day. Every day I think I learned something. There's 10 more things that I have to learn from that. So, um, but I think uh, the best part is that they come with wonderful teams. You know, we have an excellent team that is uh, really prepared and, and through the experience that we've had in now 18 acquisitions, we've kind of built our own formula that really works. There's no shortcuts. So what is the formula? I mean, for everybody here who's, who's watching, I, I think everyone would love to know what is the mother-son formula for getting 18 acquisitions done in 25 years? There's, there are no shortcuts. Um, you have to spend time in, with each one of those plants. Uh, personally, that's why Dad and I travel more than 200, 250 days a year. Dad's maybe more. He's probably even at 300. Mm. Uh, but, but absolutely, you've got to be with the teams. You've got to go and solve every single problem one by one. Mm. It's, it's not something that you take over and you think it's, it happens. You have to be there yourself. So currently, there's nine plants across the world that you're involved with in some form or fashion. I mean, how does it, how does it all come together? Uh, I think uh, emails are great help. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Skype and Link and all these things are great help. But um, uh, as Vaman said, you know, face-to-face -face is very important. And it's important to be there mm. with the team and talk to them. Uh, in fact, between Vaman and me, we don't miss any family day. We don't miss any opportunity to be with our workforce and uh, the, the factories that we have. But the key point is that, you know, as, as Vaman was saying, uh, every acquisition is like a patient. Uh, the doctor is not going to prescribe stomachache medicine for all of them. So you, you've got to sit with them, and unless you understand what's really wrong, what has to be Individualization, yes, yes. That's what's important. So I think uh, people tend to put teams or tend to put money, which yeah. is the most dangerous according to me. Uh, if you give too much money, that's also bad for an acquisition. So the ability to, to understand what is really mm. missing mm. Uh, in, in the curry that you're making. So that's, that's what uh, I think Marvin and me add. <laughs> you know, you said that uh, the uncertainty is, is proving to be an opportunity for a company like yours. If I were to ask you to, to tell me on your dashboard, what are the big risks that you're going to be watching out for? Uh, what could be the, the sort of uh, stumbling blocks, so to speak, that get in the way of the kind of aggressive targets that you set for yourself? What would those be? So uh, the aggressive targets are not built by me or Warman. You know, it's built by uh, a, a, a team of about uh, 85 to 90 marketing guys who get along with the customer uh, about six to eight months before the five-year plan starts. Now, they have to have the uh, ability uh, to get from the customer exact numbers that he wants. Those numbers are not in public domain. Mm. Uh, but he knows that because the car maker wants me to supply for that. So he's pretty accurate as to what number he has to give. So our five-year plans are built on that. Now once you are building on that, all you have to do is to understand what could be the opportunity mm. that is coming. Mm. So we have an acquisition, but we really don't know when it's going to happen, who, where, which country, we don't know. But our strike rate for uh, acquisitions, if I'm not wrong, is about 5%, isn't yeah, it? I mean, even five out of, uh, opportunity out of 100. Yeah. Mm. So uh, we, are, uh, we are very uh, patient. We, we don't have any uh, this thing to do. So I wouldn't have any shame to come back to you three years later and tell you, look, I couldn't do 18. But hey, look, I've done 16. But look at the returns uh, that the yeah. stakeholders have got. So it's more about, uh, as I said in the earlier, this you know, top line vanity, bottom line sanity, cash and bank reality. Mm. So you've got to keep that balance on your shoulders, mm. in your mind, back of your mind. And we feel that uh, uh, actually we are 19 acquisitions. All 19 are doing very fine. All 19 are doing fine. O on the debt, uh, 5,400 odd crore rupees, so not, not a concern, not an issue. Uh, planning to bring that down in any form or fashion? Not really necessary. We are 1.16 times our EBITDA. That's not really anything. Mm. And if there is a need, uh, you see, uh, you know, the market uh, has really rewarded us with our performance. Uh, we have no issues to dilute if, mm. if, if, if it's required. But we normally do a dilution once in 10 years. 
So we did it in 93, then we did it in 2004, 5, and then we did it in 2016, I think, mm. yes. Mm. So it's about 11 years. Okay. Uh, let me uh, ask you about succession. I mean, we've got Varman here, so is the succession plan clearly charted out? No, actually, I've put all... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was going to say his two grand, uh, his two sons. So, but no, but uh, definitely, I think the the uniqueness of Mother Son is that we have uh, isolated management uh, from uh, uh, of the ownership. You know, so uh, both Waman and me are not CEOs of any company, and um, the we don't find my uncles and aunties and you know my cousin brothers and all that running the group or something like that. So, I think as far as the entrepreneur uh, thing is there. Definitely, Varman is uh, uh, the successor. Uh, but the companies, per se, have their own individual uh, succession planning and things like that, which is very actively looked over by us, along with the CEOs. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a way to distinguish uh, management and, and, and ownership. Mm -hmm. So you, you talked about how you're on track and you feel confident of being able to achieve your five-year target in 2019 itself. But just for this particular year, uh, where do you see uh, most confidence coming in from? See, there is a general consolidation of the industry taking place. Mm, I think um, there is a little bit of a, um, um, a hesitation amongst huge corporates as well. Uh, they really don't uh, know which way. Yes, the, government, way. the government's complaining yes. that the animal spirits are not being unleashed. Why do yes. you believe that's the, that's the case? Look at Mulsan. We have all the... <laughs> all the animal spirits have been it's unleashed. <laughs> Is there? But uh, uh, I think it's, it's all about confidence. Do you have confidence in the automotive or not? I believe any which way you look at it, automotive is going to survive. Uh, uh, the IC engine may not. No, I think, uh, you know, there are a lot of challenges. I don't want to get uh, uh, really into that subject, but uh, think about it. You know, how many workshops are there all over the world? And the electric cars are normally working at 72 volts with 200 amps. You know, anybody touches a wire, he's ash. Yeah. So I think, uh, God forbid, if there are any accidents or something like that, uh, people will start to reconsider. My, my personal uh, this thing is more about how long do you stretch that one liter of gasoline? Mm. I think because that's the cheapest way to, 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 for the cars. Plus, you have 1.3 billion cars on the roads today, and you produce less than 400,000, 500,000 mm. cars, electric cars. Mm. You know how long it's going to take you to, to, mm. to catch up? So a lot of challenges are there. So it's not going to happen in two to three years. But yes, five years, 10 years, 20 years, there's going to be a gradual, uh, how to say, changeover mm. that might happen. But there also, I have my doubts, but people are working on 48 volts now. They're working on those particular things. But uh, that's for him to really answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me then end by asking both of you, uh, you know, what has been your biggest lesson that you've learned over the last 40 years of doing this day after day? I think, um, uh, uh, if you, uh, it's a more philosophical question. Yes, okay? now okay. you can be philosophical. <laughs> okay. okay. I think in, 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 in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells Arjun that one must by himself pick himself up. And uh, that's exactly what Mother Son has done. We have not followed anybody else to, to benchmark or something. We have always picked ourselves up. We've actually said, okay, this is what we did. This is how we're going to do it. So we have a, 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 a slogan in Mother Son. It's called BYBY, -by, uh -huh. which is by yourself, better yourself. By yourself, better yourself. Congratulations to thank the two you. of you. And thank, thank you very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Well, uh, uh, that's the Mother Son Sumi story for you. And congratulations once again to the India winner here at the World Entrepreneur Awards. From one of us on the show, thanks very much for watching.